sample that's given, um, once you do that process of exporting, is you just, it, it, it creates this little React app. And then you go, um, let's see. And it, the model you have right in here, this bit, I think, is that right? And then it goes into public or assets. Let me see. Oh, here's the model, sorry. This is what is exported out of Loeb. So all of these shards, there's quite a lot of, of data and they're relatively big. And then it has a list of your labels, and your model. That's what the model looks like. And you can see it's a graph model and it's using TensorFlow.js converter. Nice that you don't have to do that stuff yourself in Python because it doesn't become kind of a hassle. <laughs> yeah, so it does, you know, it creates all of this for you and that's really cool. And it's gonna use this local file to create um, a web app. So if I could find, create a terminal. So what I just would say yarn start, I think. And it'll go ahead and start using React scripts. Uh, why? Yeah, sure. Now this is interesting and it does take a minute to, uh, not a minute, but a little while to kind of start up. So I'm gonna just make this a little bit smaller. I just appreciated the fact that it, it, it gave, it gave you the option of just going to another random port. Like, cause one of the, one of the things that I, I find myself doing so frequently is I will, you know, start a dev process and, you know, it'll take a port 3000 and I will close the, the window without stopping the process. So the process is still running in the background. So it's still taking up port 3000. And then, you know, I go to something else and I go to launch that. Now it's saying, hey, you know, there's something already on 3000. It's because I, you know, forgot to close the window. So I appreciate the fact that it said, hey, here's here's another port. Let's just put it here for you. Exactly. So that way you don't need to go track down whatever it was that you did yesterday. So I'm going to go ahead and show it this cheese. Let's see. So it's still loading up that, that big model. Oh, so this is, this is actually the application doing that. Yeah. So this is, and you see how it's blooming and it knows it. That is cool. So yeah. this is, so this is actually just running in the browser. It's running JavaScript. It's using your camera and it's, it's giving you that, the, those results right there. The prediction. Yeah. Because what I did is I downloaded that React app. I dumped in the model that was exported and it is correct. I'm not going to budge. It's like, it was good there for a minute, but you can see how Bloomy and Wash Ryan gets confused a little bit. It's blooming. You can tell. That's good. That's very cool. So yeah, so that's, that's good. Cool. By the way, I'm I'm now hungry. I'm just, oh yeah, I know. I'm gonna have some. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's the little React app, and it just allows you to use your camera, um, and uh, it's just really useful. So this is all. I could also use this offline. It would totally work offline. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. How does how does it how does it um um how does the the page itself look like? How does that that React component look? Let's see. Like, is it is it is it easy for me to go in and and modify it? Like, obviously, I'd need to know something about React. Yeah, I had to yeah. modify. Let me think. I had to modify the one thing I modified was this. So I had to do this. Go into the .tsx file mm -hmm. for prediction, and uh, it it ships with um, uh, a thumbs up, thumbs down model. So there's like nothing thumb up or thumb down. That's the that's the demo, but my cheese model has six labels, so I just had to change this. That's the only thing I changed. But okay. it looks like this. So if you are a React person, which I'm not, but you are, um, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> sort of a React person. I, I, I appreciate that the, the fact that it's in, in TypeScript. Like TypeScript, all the things. Like I'm, mm -hmm. I'm such a huge proponent of, uh, of, of TypeScript. So, um, but I mean, it looks- it looks clean. It looks pretty straightforward, yeah. yeah. It's probably using a bit of um, TensorFlow.js syntax, this kind of sort of predictions. You, yeah. you see that from TensorFlow. Let me see what prediction entry looks like. So this is the confidence. Oh, sure. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, source selector, obviously, that's the camera. Um, so that's that drop down I was kind of fighting with to get the right camera to show. Because I don't know, I have a lot of cameras installed on this machine. I don't even know why. Um, but that is a pretty simple app. So here's the TSX file for app itself. And this is just bootstrapping it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Image selection, camera, static image prediction. That's it. I dig it. 
I dig it. So then I could I, I could incorporate that into um, um, into a React app. If I remember, you had said that you had got this working with Vue.js as well. Is that? Did. Oh, yeah. so ah, good. Look at that. I set you up perfectly for this. Isn't that amazing? And do you admire my peacock, peacock um, colors? So I gave it cheese, <laughs> cheese color, and then the blue is, um, is for the lace making. Um, yeah, so um, I wrote an article, actually, maybe we can link it in the show notes, um, about how to use this in Vue. Uh, it took a bit of doing, but we got to work in, because what I wanted to do is not do that camera. I wanted to make it more of a museum type of app, so I wanted an image uploader. So I used a little component that I found in for an image uploader from your image upload resize, uh, and then allowed myself to just kind of um, use that. So. Um, I was tinkering around the way that this model is exported is it's it's done as a graph model. So um, you need to use TensorFlow load graph model. And here's where you need to understand the TensorFlow.js syntax a little bit. So you have to await, you know, this is an asynchronous um, um, method. So you uh, await the TensorFlow and you load up that model and then you start your prediction. So you have to be a little bit careful you know, to, to make sure the experience is good and wait for the model to learn before you start trying to do um, any kind of inference. But um, it it's pretty straightforward. It's, this is a pretty easy app. I can just run it. Yeah. And it is actually really nice that you can then run that um, on something other than React. So if you decide not to use React, you could still go ahead and... Uh, yeah. 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 I remember I had a teeny bit of problem with... When I used the model in view, I had to go in and delete one line. And I went to Stack Overflow. Like, What's going on? This is a weird error. And I had to delete one line out of the model file for whatever reason. I don't know if that bug has been fixed, but um, it'd be something to just be, be aware of. I, I documented it. Okay. So okay. So here is imagine you're in a museum, you're in the textile collection of them of the MFA in Boston. So it's a fabulous <laughs> department and they're hiring. <clears throat> anyway, so um if I was you know, sitting there and I saw a piece of lace, I took a picture of it and I would want to see if I could get a, a solid recommendation of exactly what kind of lace this is looking like. So this is going to go ahead and start trying to make a calculation. I don't know if you can see this. So it's calculating against the model. So it is deciding that this is Duchesse lace. It's actually only tongue, but Duchesse is so close, it's a good enough guess. That's a pretty decent guess. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, so I kind of like this because it doesn't have that bounce, you know, when you're just trying to be, you know, deal with a camera. Yeah. It's just like, this is what it is. It is this thing. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so. One thing that's, that's definitely worth highlighting here is, um, when, when, when you hit the file explorer, like if, if, if this was running on a mobile app, when, when you hit that, that file explorer on a mobile app, well, one of the things, at least in, in, in Chrome on, on Android, and I assume iOS does, does the same, um, it will give you the option to explore your file system, but it will also give you the option to use your camera as well. So you yeah. don't have to like take the picture and then open up the site and then upload it. Like you can just streamline that process that when yeah. you hit that and uh, go to uh, the file explorer, it will then just give you the option um, yeah. right there, which is which is really nice. And it works actually. I believe I tested this because I was walk all of my lace collection is you know in frames on the wall going down the stairs. So trying not to fall down the stairs, I was you know using this thing on my mobile and you know try to just take a picture and have it do inference and that's kind of like a terrific use case for any collector or museum or anyone who's just trying to find you know this is a thing i want to know kind of what it is 